Well, this is a 2019 Mazda Miata RF, which stands for, I don't know, but it has a retractable folding top. That's right there. This is the trunk. And uh, it's a pretty cool car. So why don't we hop in? Actually, I'll tell you what. Why don't we skip to my footage in Austin, and we'll start there. Let me just cut it here. And RF stands for, well, basically it's backwards. It's actually a folding roof. It's more like a power targa, and that's what this is right here. Open this door. Inside we have a great interior. I believe this trim is called the Grand Touring, although it's not a GT because there is no back seat. So take it from me, this is not a Grand Touring vehicle. And actually, I'm going to go over a few things here. Yes, it does have an automatic, and you can get a manual. However, the difference between the manual and the automatic is very important. If you get the manual, you can get an optional package that includes a limited slip rear diff. Otherwise, this is just basically your one wheel peel with an automatic. Now that's not a bad thing per se, but I do want to show you something in my collection that I think competes with this and it's, um, it's my own personal vehicle. So before I get to there, let me get you some of the details in here. We have stitching on this leather, the paint on the exterior and the interior are matched. We have door sills, which I believe this is an optional extra. I also believe that um, there's an optional extra on the trunk lid. I'll show you that in a second. But we have auto climate control. We have a touch screen. And we have controls here as well for that screen. We have a manual handbrake. You'll see there's a sport button, which is really cool because it allows you to shift at 7,500 RPM, basically, rather than the typical 6,000, which the automatic will do on its own. You see Bluetooth integration and voice commands, and we do have a trip computer with a color display here. I mean, it's very modern, very up-to-date, very cool. And from the outside, pretty good looking. Now you cannot close or open the roof from the remote, but you can control the trunk from the remote. So I'm gonna do that right now. This black lip here is a sort of like a lip spoiler. That's an optional extra. They didn't give me a window sticker on this car, which is a little odd. Inside you'll see a huge trunk. There's obviously no spare tire, so they are gonna be run flats. Um, I say there's no spare tire because well, I believe there isn't. Yeah, I don't think there is. And then we have a manual trunk light. And this is like my age question, age old question is, if you close the fridge, does the light go out? Well, if you have to manually turn this light on or off, if you keep it on and you close the trunk, does that light go out? I don't know. You'll see the trunk here doesn't have any lining on it. It's just kind of exposed wire for a uh, antenna, part of the navigation system. It's this antenna right here. And then we do have this antenna, and keep an eye on this antenna. This one looks very familiar on the next car I'm going to show you. As far as the back of the vehicle, very sporty. And let's see what I have inside. I'm just going to open the garage. Because what this Miata reminds me of is this car right here. This is my car. I don't get to drive it much. But as you can see, pretty sporty. And it's hard to uh, make a choice. Do I want to drive this or do I want to drive that on a nice sunny day? Well, not on a hot day, I'll tell you that. So this stays in the garage for a long time because it's too damn hot to drive. Just put the top down in 100 degree weather doesn't make sense. But I do want to show you the differences between a 19-year-old Roadster and a modern-day Roadster. So first I'll hop in the BMW. Now in here, obviously it's got some patina. Uh, it's 19 years old. There's nothing you can do to make it absolutely perfect. But it does scream performance in here. And it would because it has a, an engine from the M3. This is the S52, not the S54, but still a hoot to drive. And so, the whole point of getting in here, notice where my knees are in relation to the dash. I have plenty of room 
in this vehicle to sit. And this is obviously my sitting position. And looking out, there's plenty of visibility. But I feel like I'm sitting in the car. I feel like I'm down low in the car. Let me close the door. And my uh, arm is comfortably on top of the door sill because the doors are nice and low. So the belt line on the vehicle is low and the dash is a little higher up. You can see it just kind of angles up. But in, in whole, like this car feels so damn perfect. So this is the Z3 with an M engine in it, but you can still get a Z3. Now I want to show you some of the old school stuff in here. And that is, let me just get my key out. Uh, number one, it doesn't have keyless entry <laughs> or remote start or navigation or anything. You just have a key. And the key actually has a built-in light. Uh, I guess it's needing a new battery. Yep. But we'll stick the key in here. All right. Gotta love that BMW gong. All right. I want to show you how this top works. First, you manually lift that and that, and then you push it up a little bit. And this is a power top, so you have to have your foot on the brake, and then the power button is right here. Let's see. Eh, maybe the vehicle has to be on. Let's turn it on. That yeah, has to be on. So the top goes back and just sits right there, nice and snug, and it's done. And you'll see that the interior cloth is basically exposed to the outside. This is the inside, and it doesn't fold down like the Fiat Spider or the Miata. And then you just put your little sun visors up, and you're good to go. But we have nice touches in here like full leather on the uh, armrest, door pulls, and the dash. And this car, when it was new, stickered at $42,000. So it's a great little car. It's nice and roomy inside, and I'll tell you, it's roomier right now than the Miata. But... Um, this is where I want to show you the Miata. The differences are pretty cool. And I've got both cars, so I might as well do it. I'm going to shut this off. I'm going to get out. Take my key. We'll get that later. Alright, let's hop in the Mazda. Yes, I am missing something. This little clip fell off, and I'll get to that one day. But as you can see with the top down... Oh yeah. Now for this thing, let's see the uh, comparison here on the roominess. Now keyless entry, keyless start. <sighs> now look at where my knees are. I cannot fit anything in here. And this is with the seat as far back as it can go. There's basically very limited room. So you may feel like modern roadsters may be safer, and that may be true in a respect, but being so close, I don't think that makes me feel any more comfortable. And then you have to look at the headroom. I don't have much headroom with this hard top. And with the top down, you'll see how close this pillar is to my head compared to what it is in the BMW. So let's start this up. All right, and I'm going to power top button. This one, you do not release anything. You just press up on the button, and you can see the animation there. You can also see this clip undoes itself, and the roof does its magic on its own. Very nice. But it's still a Targo, so you kind of get like this Targo roof to it. And now it's done. In here, I have a sill that it's painted, so it gets hot in the Texas sun. And you put your arm up on there, and you are going to burn. And then the weird thing is... The door still kind of dives down rather than up in the BMW, so you feel like you're sitting on the car rather than in the car. Kind of hard to explain. But what I want to do is pull this into the garage and park it next to the BMW so you can get a better idea for how these things look. You see I have a uh, backup camera, which I do not have in the BMW, obviously. Pulling a tiny car like this into a garage is very easy. I want to line up the uh, A-pillars if I can. I think that looks about right. Okay, so you will see I'm wearing a hat, but this is how close that A-pillar is to me. 
in the Miata. And that's okay, but I feel like the RF version is a little smaller inside than the Fiat Spider or the Mazda Ragtop. Still though, this car weighs 2,500 pounds, the BMW weighs 3,000 pounds. So the BMW has an inline six with 240 horsepower, whereas this has a four-cylinder, naturally aspirated engine producing 181 horsepower. So we're down on power here by 60, but we have 500 less pounds to carry around. Unless, of course, you throw two adults in this car, then, of course, you're right back up at the BMW. But we don't have a limited slip diff with this automatic transmission. And I'm not really going to drive this around because I can't uh, drive with the top open or windows down, or you can't hear me on the camera when I've got all this wind blowing. So what I will say is the BMW is very powerful and very poised, whereas the Mazda Miata, it's a great car, but it feels like it's trying a little too hard, and I'll explain that. Let me do that right now. So we are on Bridgestone Potenza S001s and they're 205 4517s. If we look at the Beamer, we're on Bridgestone Pole Position SO4s that I installed two weeks ago and we're on 245 40R17s. So same wheel size, different, uh, slightly different widths on the treads and you can see that right there so the BMW is putting more power down the BMW also has a limited slip diff so which one would you rather have and and even the door sill heights look pretty much the same the BMW is a little lower but on the comfort side the BMW has it there's a gardener going by. They're going to start doing the uh, sidewalks and stuff. So as far as the design, obviously the Mazda has a more modern design if you're into that. And I think it's also classic at the same time. It's kind of like a RX-8 look. Which, of course, the first Miata was based on the RX-7. So it's great homage. The Z3 is totally different for its kind. It was designed by a Japanese designer. So you can see the resemblance. And you can see what BMW did. That was built in South Carolina. This is built in Japan. Let's get in the BMW one more time. So you'll see where the dash is compared to the A-pillar. And you'll see it here. It's kind of in the same position. And the rake on the Mazda is a little steeper than on the BMW. So it's just kind of weird. Like, what you have to do is you have to look at how the seat backs are in relation to the cabin. And if you can't tell, the BMW's got a lot more room in it. And so I'll sit down and show you where my head is with that A-pillar. So you saw originally in there, the A-pillar was like right here. Here in the BMW, it's, oh, it's a good foot. So comparing these two cars on the safety aspect, Yes, the Mazda is more modern. Yes, it has more uh, lightweight steel, more technology, more of an update. But this has more space. So to me, I feel like being six feet tall and 260 pounds, like this is a comfortable car for me. Whereas the RF, unfortunately, is not comfortable. It's just too cramped. It's hard to get in and out of. Although if it was the standard rag top, I would definitely say check it out. The biggest problem on this car, though, is this back end. It looks great, but when you're sitting inside, that is a huge blind spot. So you must have the uh, blind spot monitors in the mirrors. In the BMW, you don't, you don't have a blind spot. There's just no such thing as a blind spot in this car. I do have roll bars behind me that's standard on 98s and above. And, of course, in the Miata... Uh, with the hard top, that is the roll bar. Now let's go back into uh, this mode. Let's put this top up. Let's show you how long that takes. <clears throat> Got to start the car. You, of course, you put the key in, and this is a manual. So. All right, we press the button. I don't get any notification here that it's closing, but you'll see it does. Whoops. Yeah, it does that once in a while. So, it flies down, 
and you have to uh, pull the pin in by moving these handles in. Sometimes it stops up there, but if I haven't driven this car in a long time, the uh, hydraulic pump and everything just sort of comes down with a lot more force. But there you go, it's done. So that didn't take very long at all. I'm going to turn this off. And then let's go ahead and check out the Mazda. Yes, I do have cup holders. They're right here. This is how Germans were with cup holders back in the day. Uh, you're better off driving, uh, not enjoying your libations. And there is a glove box on the Z3s. It's very popular for this to sag. So I fixed that by ordering another bar, the same bar, and doubling them up. And now it fits just fine. So I'm happy with that. And of course, I have had to fix the subwoofer, so I installed a new subwoofer in the back, and this thing sounds great. It still has a little bit of age to it. You know, you could see it with the condition of some of the leather and stuff, but I'm happy with it. And I'm really happy that the prices on these are going up right now, so that's always fun. I didn't buy it as an investment, though. All I did was buy it to preserve the manual transmission. So when I talk about the Mazda trying too hard, it really comes down to... It is a fun car, don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking it at all. I would definitely like one. Actually, I was going to buy a Fiat Spider just before buying this car. This car just happened to come up on the market, and I, I thought, I can't pass this up. I've always wanted one of these since I was a kid, so I got this. But I would have had the Fiat Spider easy, very easy. But this doesn't have traction control. This is the last year of this M Roadster without traction control. There is an ASC, which is anti-slip control. That's like off-the-line acceleration. But if you disable that, there's no traction. There's nothing here to save you from going off the road. And with a limited slip diff and all this power and a manual transmission, you're in full control. And there's so much balance and it's so poised that you can power out and, and basically save your day um, by using a good throttle brake balance through corners. Not that you're going to track this every day or do anything, but if you wide open throttle on the freeway like I do and uh, enter into corners like I do, it is fun and I like doing it. But it's not twitchy. It doesn't, it doesn't try to kill me. The Miata, on the other hand, is a different story. So let me get into that. Oh, let me put the windows up. That's another downside to an older car is uh, I don't have a way to put the windows up with the key. So let's just go ahead and do that. And I'm sorry for the gardeners. All right, let's go to the Miata. Kind of a tight squeeze here. Woo! Okay. So in the Miata, when the top is down, you have an opening here, and uh, that's you can go straight through. There is a bit of a buffer, but you can put your hand straight through to the cockpit. So even with the windows down, or up, you still get a breeze coming through. Now look how look how close I am when I get in. Look how close I am to hitting my head. And obviously, if the top was up, I have to contort in all sorts of weird ways, which hasn't been fun. This also has uh, metal pedal caps down there, which are another option. So this car isn't exactly pushing for, uh, 40 grand. This is like 37 the way it's equipped. But no matter what, you're still going to get this car for less than 42, which is what that cost when it was brand new. In today's money, though, that car, to get that car, would be 63 grand, which sounds like a lot for a car that doesn't have nav, doesn't have, uh, well, it does have heated seats, but it doesn't have like a power top that does everything, and it just has a stereo and a manual transmission. No Bluetooth, nothing. Back in the day, those cars were so, so savage that I had to get it. But here in this car, it's savage in a different way. And that's because it doesn't have a limited slip diff and it has really narrow tires for the power it has. And it has traction control. So when I say this car tries too hard, I feel like it has a lot of oversteer. And when you start to put your foot down, the traction control steps in, but it, not until it's actually let the rear end slide out a little bit. So it does give you some fun. However, when you drive this in the morning and you're not paying attention or you're in a bit of a hurry, you can't drive this thing in a bit of a hurry like you can drive the BMW in a bit of a hurry. And what I'm saying is 
you will get caught out on a corner in this car, and the traction control will remind you that you've been caught out. Whereas in the BMW, it'll just keep pushing and pushing and pushing, and you will you will never find a limit at 50 miles an hour through a corner. In the Miata, you will find that, and that happens a lot in those Texas U-turns. So I'm here in Austin. What I'm going to do is cut to footage of me driving this car in Dallas, and I'll explain more about what I mean. Well, you can see our speed is about 95. We're averaging 32 mpgs, and we're just heading towards Dallas. And as you can tell by all the noise, this is not really a GT car. Even though I call it a Grand Touring, there's nothing GT about it. Uh, it's kind of cramped in here. Very limited space, as you can see. And the suspension's actually decent for a any sports car because it doesn't bottom out and it's a pretty supple ride for what it is. I mean there's a little bit of body roll but you're not going to be tracking this car daily as much as you will just be getting around daily. But it's just beautiful out here. I figured I would get this on camera for you. We're about an hour from Dallas averaging 32. This kind of reminds me of like a little Cessna airplane. That engine kind of dominates, and we're kind of bounced around a little bit. But it's not a grand tour in that respect. It is fun. It is fun, though. I'm not going to knock it for that. And even at these speeds, it just seems to be quite capable. I would say, though, it's not on the grand touring side of what they say. The name of it would be Best Haley Misnomer. It's still a decent Miata with a hard top. Oh look, no sleep till Bucky's. I guess I should drive, huh? Well, I'm back in Dallas, and I have a little bit of a uh, sore throat going on. <laughs> this is the price I pay. I go through all of this for you. So just give me one second as I get out of the vehicle. I just want to show you this car one more time. It's kind of windy out. But it looks really cool. You can't blame it for its looks. Very sporty. By the way, what I said about the Centeno was to pay attention to it, like the BMW and even the Mercedes SLK, the previous gen, they all seem to have that same whippy antenna. It's pretty funny. Contrary to like the SLK, which has that folding hard top, this Miata is quite magical because when I fold that top, it doesn't go into the trunk. Let's see if I can do it here. I can't, I can't really fold the top from the key or anything, so I have to hold the button down. Can I give you the show from here? Okay, it's done. So what happens is the window in the back disappears. This is a, uh, a plexi, kind of like flexible uh, windbreaker. <laughs> and then if you look at the trunk, you still have a trunk. So where'd the top go? The top is right here. So it seems like they sacrificed a little bit of the cabin room to get that top in there. I don't think the folding top ever took up that much room, but I think part of that price you pay is this car has a smaller interior. At least it feels that way. So, let me get my seatbelt on. And uh, what I'll say is, I'm not trying to trash talk the Miata. I'm basically trying to say... Uh, yeah, it's a great car, it's a sporty car, but it's not a Grand Tour, and they call this the Grand Tour trim, but I don't see, I don't see where it's so grand. If this was bigger and had an engine from the MX-5, 
I mean, uh, <clears throat> the uh, CX-5, I would be like, yeah, this thing's awesome. But it's so small and so compact that it's just a little car to get around town in. And I drove it to Austin and back, and it's it's too tiny. I'll put this top up now. And you can kind of see what I'm going to talk about here. And that is just the cabin space. To be a Grand Tour, it has to be luxurious and comfortable and quiet. And if you can't tell, I have no headroom in here. My hair is a little spiked up, but it's just normal. And I have no room. <clears throat> so this is a painful way uh, to go on a long trip in. But I endured it for you. Uh, I did average 16, uh, sorry, 29.3 over 688.4 miles. And um, it's been decent on the fuel. I haven't really, I don't remember the last time I filled it up, but it's it's been, uh, I think, one trip to the tank. So that's not bad. However, it's still not a sports car, and that's because it's trying too hard to be one. It's smooth, and there's an automatic, and, you know, it's okay, it's choosing the right gear here and there, but it's, it's trying too hard to be a lightweight sports car, and what they should have done was just made it bigger, add weight, add power, and made it more of a, of a real car. Because the problem is... You can drive around and cruise like this, and, and uh, you'll be okay. But the moment you want to be in a hurry, you have to drive it like like you're in a race because of the way it takes corners uh, with these skinny profile tires, which are there obviously to give you an element of fun. It just doesn't um, it just doesn't grip the road as you expect with the different speeds you're going to go, and uh, obviously that's. Like, of course, Brian, but compared to heavier roadsters, uh, like the Mercedes and that BMW, um, this this car just, it, it seems like it needs traction control, whereas the others don't. So that's floored on regular mode. If I slow down, let's put it in sport, put that up there, and you'll see a sport indicator there. And now I floor it. winds way up there. <clears throat> and uh, it'll downshift too in corners. Problem is, going through corners. It grips and everything, but because this doesn't have a limited slip diff, the automatic doesn't come with that. It kind of feels like it corners left differently than it corners the right. Let's take that out of sport mode. Okay, so still it's a it's a fun car to drive and it's very uh, pleasing to look at, but it's just too damn small. And it has plenty of power. They added power. They added things like tilting and telescoping steering wheel adjustment now. That's new for 19 on all Miatas. And uh, at, at 181 horsepower, this definitely feels more powerful than that Lexus UX I drove, which has the same exact amount of uh, horsepower. Although that car was like a thousand pounds heavier. Cup holder is in a great spot. Of course, you could move that and put it back here and plug it in there. But what I want to talk about, though, is this car in general. Because my BMW is 19 years old, and if you wanted something like that, you have to wait and find one that that looks right, or is in the right shape, or has the records, or is in the right price range. And it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of patience, and you have uh, you need the time to do it. Whereas this car, you just go to the dealer and you buy one. So for some, this is obviously the better way to go, because you don't have to wait <coughs> to uh, make your purchase decision. You can just get one. And I totally understand that. However, I think Vol uh, Volkswagen, I'm looking right at their freaking uh, sign. They don't make a convertible anymore anyway. I think Mazda made a mistake by not making this big enough. If they had taken the new Mazda 3 platform and put the bigger engine in here and, and made it a real, like, with a maybe even a 2 plus 2 with some sort of a back seat and called that a GT, I totally... I'd, I'd throw 50 grand down on that. Be like, I'd rather have this. 
over a BMW Z4, and that's where I'm going here. I think Mazda is trying to go upmarket, but they're they're still just the upmarket economy car, especially when you look at the new three. But they have the potential, and I think this car, with its sporty lineage, I mean, this thing is like an indelible mark on the fabric of sports cars. This thing is the definition. This brought back cars uh, into the into the forefront, sports cars at least. That's why BMW made the Z3. BMW wouldn't have made it if, if Mazda never made the Miata. That's that's for sure. So <clears throat> we owe a lot to the Miata, but I don't really feel like I owe much to the hardtop version because it's just trying to fill one one little aspect of, of a Mazda buyer. Whereas it's not really trying to say, hey, we're Mazda and we can make a grand tour and uh, we're going to make a good attempt at it. Actually, what I want to do is show you one more thing. Let me just pull in here. Shit, do not enter. Here we go. The tackle shop, because there's, there's no lake near here either. All right. I want to lower the top and drive for a second because what you'll find is this this uh, back corner here catch, catches all the air. So when you drive along, even with the window up, you hear the air here. And it's really loud and annoying. So I just want you to hear it. On camera, it's going to sound terrible, but just believe me. Oh, the sun. Woo! Ah! Okay. So this part here. Clear. You hear that? It's like it's like coming from right here. And it's all I end up hearing. And it's a really annoying sound because it doesn't go away. It just keeps making noise. And uh, it's it's not a terrible car. It's just a tiny car, and it's got plenty of power. And it's trying a little too hard to be a lightweight sports car when it shouldn't be at this point. As the hardtop version, it should be a completely different car. Um, it is a striking look. It is very very cool looking, but you know I'm more of a of a uh, Fiat. 124 Spider fan and a Miata fan because of these door sills and the way this thing rides compared to the Fiat. Uh, but people like to customize their cars and all that too. And that's that's where I'm getting at. If you can find the right car for you, then get it. Um, if you like this car, get it. I couldn't buy it because I'm just too damn tall. And I'm only six feet tall, so you'd have to really be six under 5'10", five, 5'8", five, to really enjoy this car on a daily basis. But, uh, we do have a lot of the safety features in here, the auto braking and the blind spot monitor and a bunch of other things. So this is a modern car. It's not just a, it's not just a toy. And it has a Bose stereo, although the headrest is pretty, pretty hard. There's a, a speaker in that headrest for your for your, uh, when you use the cell phone, you hear the call coming out of the back of your headrest. So there's no padding there at all. So you hit a little bump and it's like, ow, damn, that hurts. And uh, I'm not a fan of that. But there you go. So that's it. That's the Mazda Miata RF. It's a pretty cool car. This is too bad that it's so damn small. If it was bigger and had uh, power... I would say this would be a really, really nice vehicle, but it, <clears throat> fortunately they tried too hard to make it small and lightweight and keep that sporty edge to it, and I wish it was more of a Grand Tour, but still can't complain. It's pretty cool. Thanks for watching.